Hi, I'm Corey, and welcome to Creating with Scraps. This is the mostly completed 6x6 six six journal that I made using the Tim Holtz paper of the Scrap Buster ideas. It's long overdue, long overdue, and I apologize for that. So the beginning of this video will be a flip through of the journal, the completed journal, or mostly completed journal. And then at the end, I've got some thank yous and happy mail and just a quick update on um, what is taking me so long and how I am going to, actually, I'll do that first, how I'm going to change this. So as I've said before, anytime I make a journal, I learn something or a lot of some things. And I learned some things in this one. I used an accordion style spine in this book. And I used to make them, oh, I don't know, 15 years ago or more when I was doing more scrapbooking. And now I remember why I don't love that system. And I'll show you why when we get to it. So I'm going to, the one I walk you through, I will make, I'm making some changes to, and um, that will start either tomorrow, which is Friday or Saturday. I'm not quite sure which, but very soon, not making you wait weeks and weeks again. But we will do the same thing with the cover and I'll show you how I made the cover. And um, I'll still use a can, this cool canvas cotton type spine and a similar style closure. So here's the book. And what I did was I made myself a list and I numbered on the on the the items what number video it was on, and I'll have that available for you if you're interested. But I had told you originally that I was going to do tabs on the edge. I think went back to one of my videos, and I think it was like seven or eight or something. I had said that I would make tabs for the sides, and I didn't like the way it looked. I played with that for probably a week, and I just couldn't make it work to where I liked it, so I stopped. But the list to make sure I include all of my um, Scrap Buster Ideas is here, and a couple that I forgot. That's a good place to start. Barbara Young, one of my viewers and just a super sweet lady, had shared what she'd made, and she included a couple things that I'd forgotten about, not because I don't like them, but because I just flat out forgot. The Rita Donnelly flip, um, the Harmalinda tag, a faux postage stamp, paper flowers, and then triangle corners as tucks. So I've got some samples of those for you, and if needed, I'll show you how I made them. Um, I'm happy to do that. Brings up another great point. Recently, I had a viewer say that, you know, I was talking to simply people know this stuff. And then I had another viewer say, well, maybe, but some of us are new and we don't know these things. New to junk journaling, new to paper crafting, what have you. We don't know the things that other people take for granted. So I'm trying to be conscientious of both elements, the people who've done this for a long time and know the things, so I don't want to take too long explaining things to honor them. But at the same time, new folks, I, I get it. When I was new too, I was devouring videos trying to figure out, well, what does this mean? Well, how do I do that? And so I'm going to try to blend the boat, the two. All right, opening up, getting into the journal. This, um, I again use a six by six Tim Holtz paper, and I made the cover six and a quarter by six and a quarter just to kind of tuck in some of the elements on the side. And I had found a piece of vintage crochet at a yard sale or a thrift store or something. And I used that to hold the thing together with another find um, at an auction in Shipshawana. I had purchased um, a whole bunch of old locks and keys. And I have no idea what I'm going to do with all of these. But they were really cool and I couldn't pass it up. Maybe I'll stick them in the shop if people are interested. But I used one of those keys as the closure. I'm going to put this away so I don't grab it again. So I used one of these keys as a closure. And I can tuck it through and take it out that way. But it's just faster and easier to do it like this. So I'll walk you through. And what I'm going to try to do is list the scrap buster item as I come to it in the book so that you know and you can see that I've used them all. I checked myself because no one trust me. So cover, scraps. I had a bin of leftover rectangular and square bits. I ink, I cut them straight, inked the edges, and then I used the those. I glued them down like at a collage, so scrap collage for the cover. And that's put on top of chipboard. This was a um, a journaling card with a scrap journaling card because I've got scrap bits in there and then die cuts and an old envelope which are all things made with um, scrap buster items. Uh, this page I used um, 
This is the matchbook. And I just tucked it in the glassing bag, which I used to make a tuck, which is another item, and a journaling card there. And then this this little bit, this fold-over bit, am I even in frame? Sorry, guys. This fold-over bit I made into a little pocket for a journaling card. This is a button spot. So if I were to count, and I certainly won't do this on every page, I've got a tab, I've got a journaling card, I've got a tag, I've got a button spot, I've got a matchbook, and a tuck. So a lot of, I don't even know what they say, five or six of these Scrap Buster ideas are combined on one page. And that's why I did the tabs and tags, the, the labels like I intended didn't work because I combine them all the time. And I didn't realize how much I combined them until I started making this book. And this one, ah, okay, so here's another either a bookmark or a journaling tag and a cluster. Oh, that cluster needs to have a little bit of, of um, glaze or gloss on that. And this was another of the six by six square ideas with the Tim Holtz paper. This one had, was torn, so I just cut off the corner and glued it down to make a tuck spot. So it's a six by six. And then here is a pocket, which is a scrap buster idea with a journaling card. Again, scrap buster idea and um, bits made into pockets again. So pocket on a pocket with, um, oh, that was a flip down journaling tag and then a bookmark or journaling card. All right, envelopes or pockets and square envelopes. And um, just, you know, a bit of a scrap as a tag, a uh, tab. Boy, it's tough to see those two together. And here's the three pocket full page with just varying um, bits inside of each pocket to journal. So journaling cards, um, a journaling booklet, and then the one on the side, the big side, I made a long, let's see if I can get it out without without bending it. And then just a long, those off cut, uh, so a journaling pad, there's probably eight, 10 pages on there to fit in that long skin, skinny pocket. Okay, a lace pocket, um, uh, practice writing, cursive writing, a jib and neary thing where you practice your, your printing and such. And then here's the uh, top trip, top flip trifold. Okay, it's early in the day. My voice obviously isn't working well yet. And then here's a negative space and a writing space on the back. So the negative space of a die with book page underneath it and then backed with journaling paper so that you could use it as a bookmark or a, um, I could put this in as a belly band or a tuck spot or a journaling card. So just a lot of options with those items. Here is a dry embossed belly band and a journaling card with just again, a, a bit of scrap fabric. Uh, this is one of the triangle folds. Actually, this one's the rectangle into a triangle fold. And here is just a scrap journaling card with some lace at the top. And it, this one has uh, some several pockets, which is why I liked it. And what I did is I took two. So this was a rectangle, right? And I don't remember which video number that was on. I should have put it in here. And I folded it down to make a triangle. And then I did the same thing with another piece and I folded it down to make a triangle. And then I just layered the two together. So it's got the big pocket in the back. It's got a tuck spot on the side. It's got a tuck spot in where they meet. It's got a tuck spot on this side. And it uh, holds a whole bunch of stuff. And then this one, I think I showed you guys this. This is just one of those uh, pocket flips. So you, you have the top of your folded down writing space loose so that you can put it over the top of a pocket like that. And um, yeah, so all of those beads. Oh, and here's just a little bitty bead, a single bead on a paper clip. Uh, envelopes, scrap, scrap paper envelopes with a cluster. And I know somebody will ask, so I'm gonna tell you now. Uh, Carrie at witchcraftdoyoudo.com sells these fabulous chipboard, I don't know, I want to say maybe they're what, an eighth inch, sixteenth inch? I'm not 100% sure. But 
fabulous chipboard pieces. And so I played with it and to make these, and I've got another one here, they're so much fun. I just took ink pen and covered, colored it. And then I put it on in a, uh, in a clear embossing pad. And then I covered it with Seth after vintage beeswax. And that's the look you get. And it's so much fun to do. I might've done a few, a few too many, but carry it witchcraft do you do chipboard ink you can use uh, Tim Holtz distress ink or oxide though you'd get a flatter effect with the oxide or you can just do what I did and I used the zig clear brush markers and just colored them and then dry emboss not dry emboss um, wet emboss and then Seth after vintage beeswax on the top so that's that so this has obviously two spaces for journaling cards and then there's a tuck spot in the back and as as par usual for me my journal was getting um, really full. You know, I shouldn't even put these back while I'm doing this. It takes too long. This is a Tracy two side. So it's that magnet closed um, over the top two sided bit that I, uh, Tracy Fox showed me and I showed, or showed us and I put into a video. And this is the shaped pocket. So this is just a circle pocket. And I turned it on its side to make a place for decoration for the front, but also a place to put my paper clip. So kind of, you know, one, two, there's three things on there for this one. A uh, double pocket with a stamp card. And the reason I included this is, so you don't have to put stamps in these stamp cards where you put just little bits of vellum. You can use it to hold something else like I did here. I mean, of course, could put, tuck some stamps in there, but you can use them for many things. And then just a, um, a scrap bookmark, a collaged bookmark. I guess, you know, made collage pages, cut them down and sewed around a bit to make a bookmark journaling card tag what have you and then a tab and then this bell is on here because it was one of my grandmother's my grandmother used to collect uh, old bells and this is one of the few I had left and now the dingly thing is gone but um it just made me smile to have it on there and journaling cards um these numbers I got in uh, as a thank you when I purchased the where you put your signatures in from Amy at Crafty Cat USA. She has one of those Glowforge machines and um, it's great for putting signatures in a book. And when she sent that, the, the die cuts came with it, which are really kind of fun. So scrap strip into a pocket, uh, journaling card. And then here is just some scrap, a little long thin strip of scrap that I'd folded over to make the edge to a journaling card. And then a little cluster here. This is um, a Gale fold down. No, not Gale. Wrong. Corey. Laura Bame from the Papered Soul, the fold down that she does where you clip it up at the top and then you fold it down for your writing space. That's what that is. And then this is just, um, a, you know, a mini fabric flip or um, just kind of a fun embellishment with, with scraps of, oh, what's that stuff called? A scraps of lace and linen and such. All right, this is again a journaling card, but it's also got a bit of lace on it so that you could cut it off if you choose to and use in something else or just, you know, kind of hides your little journaling spot and that's on the back. And this is a book, one of the scrap books, uh, notepad book lit on the inside. And then I just attached it on three sides to make the tuck spot in the back and then just some postage stamps on there. This was a whole collage page. The whole bit was a collage and uh, that was a lot of fun to do. And then I did a negative space tuck spot on the top and a um, fold over journaling card with bits of lace. Oh, I didn't ink the inside of that. I need to do that. And um, fold over bits of lace in the end. A lot of times I'll back these negative spaces with book page, but this time I just used a scrap of tracing paper, a tab. Uh, this is one, uh, I think I've got another one over here somewhere, wherever I put it. Oh, here we go. So when I was doing these books, I made a whole, oh, yeah, yikes, that's big. I made a whole bunch of pieces as with some scraps, as I was clearing my scrap bin. And when you take a divot out of a page, you're left with this half circle thing. So what I did is I took those half circles and I combined them to do, it could be a page border, it could be, um, 
you know, I, like I used it on there over the top of lace just as a bit of a decoration, but I utilize the scraps. Here it is, sewn, if you can see that, and here they are, unsewn. Just kind of a fun way to um, use up some of those scraps. And so that's what that was. I just made a braille page tuck spot with, with these, you know, journaling cards and scraps and um, glued it on top. Book page. Oh, here we go. Scrap card. I didn't even put a sticker or anything on it. And I can you can use it like this over the top or just tuck it in either way. Book page, tab, journaling card, and then just a bit of a lace cluster. Oh, this is a button spot. It's just a larger button spot. Envelope, journaling card with just a simple journaling card with, you know, leftover bit of, this is just one of those rectangles of the paper sewed on to use as kind of an embellishment. A little bit of interest there. Um, one thing I've been doing lately, grading lots of papers towards the end of the school year, and I've seen some comments that kind of make me sad. Um, don't like making ring-bound journals. A journal should be for writing, not decoration. Um, so if you don't like making a ring-bound journal, make a different kind. There's all different kinds to do. So do the things. I guess what I'm trying to say is there's so many things that we have to do or we feel like we should do or we need to do that this doesn't need to be that way. Just do what makes you happy. Do what's fun. And if you think somebody said a journal should be for writing, well, only if you want it to be for writing. If you want it to be for memorabilia or just because it's pretty, then, then that's how you should make it. Um, so... Somebody else had mentioned in one of the comments that it's just an idea book. Why are you wasting so much time? Well, because I enjoy it. It's fun. Yes, I could absolutely make this with simple book page and just put it down and write on there and just make it a reference for that sort. And that would be absolutely fine. But I wanted to make it like this because I enjoy it. And some people say, well, it doesn't really look like an idea book. It looks more like a journal. Well, that's okay. I Like I said, I have these little tags that have the, the idea itself and the number on it. And I'll tuck them into the various spots and I'll share that with you if you're interested in it but if it makes you happy to this do it this way then do it this way if you'd rather do it with just a whole bunch of book page and make it simple and straightforward then then that's a great idea too so there you go there's my rant bottom tuck um just a little bit of a journaling card here on the top of it this is the one of the paper stacks uh what did I call them stack something Sorry, my brain is tired. Stacked pockets. There you go. I had them three different ways in my um, Flips, Flaps, and Folds book. And they're a fabulous way to use scrap or leftover bits of paper. And that brings me to another squirrel because, you know, I like to squirrel. I've been to yard sale recently and I got these. And I've wanted to make a signature rack. One of the things that I struggle with is seeing what type and color of print with the way I store them. You know, stack them the books in the shelf up like this. And so I have to go through each one when I want to see the different um, text and color and print on the book pages. And so I was thinking of making a signature rack and I'll get a scrap of, um, you know, bit of wood and then put these in sideways, drill holes and put them in sideways so that I can hang the signatures of the books over the top so I can see immediately at a glance what color it is, what size text, what language it might be in, that kind of thing. So that's one of my projects, but I'm not allowing myself to do it until next week when school is officially out. So there's that. A squirrel, once again. All right. A journaling card with a tab. This is one of the flip pockets, or uh, pocket flips. You know, we just lay it over the pocket. And then here is just another one of those little itty-bitty mini writing books. So even on this page, there is significant... There's actually more place to write on this page than if I just left it blank. So for those who say you've got to have blank writing space, well, there's lots of writing space. So you just do what you want. Um, this is a top tuck. And let's see here. This little itty bitty pocket. And here's a tag. See, this is a top tuck. And it's one of my favorite quotes. Logic will take you from A to B. Imagination will take you everywhere. I am not a scientist by any means, way, shape, or form. But I like Einstein, and I agree with that quote completely. It's fun to play. And here is another writing booklet. You know, there's a whole writing pad in here so with some old, real old writing paper. So again, probably more writing space than if I just left this page. Whoops. If I'd left this page blank for writing. Here is a scrap card with a belly band that I've used the um, Gail fold down. Love you, Gail Augustinelli. You are amazing. 
So Gail fold down, tucked in there, and it you know holds nicely on that. This is one of the, let's see if I can grab it. We used to make them in scrapbooking a really long time ago. And a very sweet viewer, um, gosh, I just drew a blank on her name because I said it, uh, because I said it. Uh, I think it was Nancy. I think it was Nancy that sent that to me. She she sent me um, a bit of a happy meal. And in it was this beautiful handmade paper flower. And I had, we used to make these in scrapbooking. And I'd kind of forgotten about them just because I don't, I don't generally make them anymore. Though why, I don't know. And this is what I was talking about with these little things. I didn't have a video number, so that's why there's no number on here. But paper flowers, that's another thing you can do with scraps. And one of the ways we made these paper flowers um, is with circles. You know, various size circle punches. And if you're interested, I can show you, because all these are is different size circle punches, and then the leaves are also circle punches, just, you know, made into leaves. And you can do it with book page to make them fairly thin. I put brads in the middle because I like brads, but you can just put a, a little knot or, um, you know, something completely flat. You can use an even smaller punch to make a circle in the middle. Um or you can do them with, I did leftover cardstock on these. So they're a lot of fun. They're kind of addictive. You sit there and you punch your leftover paper and, um, you know, just make a bunch of these things. So if you're interested, I'll certainly show you how I make those. Uh, so paper flower, happy meal, little tags. So I go off on squirrels all the time and that's just kind of how I do it. I think that way. So this is a cluster with a um, paper flower. Here is that incredibly awesome pocket that Gail made. I didn't, because of the size of my pages, I didn't open it up at the top, but you certainly could. And I will try to remember to link the video that, that Gail shows how to make this. It's really simple and it's a whole lot of fun. She had four tucks on hers and I just wanted to break up the square symmetry. So I just took a, a bit of a, a digital and put it down in here. And this one is the Wendy Townsend Concertina. So where you just take this up and you accordion fold the paper and then you use a scrap to hold it closed. And I just tucked that into the side there just because I liked the way it looked. And then this is the other of those triangle folds that are two different kinds. This one's actually starts life as a triangle and then you fold a piece back. And it again makes a ton of spots. So you've got um, a spot in the back for as a tuck spot. Um, you've got the top side piece right here. You've got this tuck spot and you've got this tuck spot. So it's got quite a few tuck spots. And again, I just took two of them and I layered them on top of each other just because I liked, whoops, sorry about that, liked the way it looked. Um, and this is one of the things we made with the four by four Tim Holtz not four by four, three by three Tim Holtz squares. And I said I was going to try to include those. And I didn't include most of them simply because I forgot when I was putting the book together. And at the end, when I remembered, it's like, ah oh, man, and it didn't all work. But um, this is one of the projects we made. And then just a, a journaling card on the back, journaling card inside, double-sided journaling card inside. Oops. And then a pocket on the front with another journaling card coffee dyed paper on the back. So again, lots of writing space, probably more than I would have if I had just left the page blank. Now, there are drawbacks to doing it the way I do it. Your book gets full fast, which is why I went with a different type of a signature or a different type of a spine. And I won't do that again. I'm going to change it up for the one we make together. Uh, one of the Gibbonieri full page bits with an envelope um, opening in it and then Again, just another button spot. I had fun with the button spots too. And then just some coffee dyed writing paper. So you can write in there and you don't have to share your thoughts if you don't want to. Out in the open, you can put it in there. This is one of those corner tucks and I did not show how to make these, but I believe Gail has a video that shows and I will look and link if, if she does. And if she doesn't, I'll show you. They're pretty straightforward once you figure out how to do them. And again, using scraps. Uh, just collage journaling card tucked into the top and 
this is another one of the scrap cards. And instead of having them in long strips this way, I put the strips together. I mean, they're still in vertical strips, but I had space with the really, really thin ones. Well, these are a little bit thicker ones and just another way to do the same thing. And my friend Laura, I don't know if she printed this on her computer or if she has a stamp that she did these with, but she sent some of these on tissue paper and they're a lot of fun and they're thin, which is always good. And another benefit of this is you've got a lot of writing space. And again, I keep forgetting to ink the edges on that. I guess I better do that. Good reminder to myself. Okay, this is a window or a frame page. And that's another thing. I put it here so I wouldn't forget and I've moved it and now I don't know what I did with it. Okay. Oh, there you go, it's underneath. All right, window page. I use, you know, acetate, window film, whatever, but I got this at a yard sale a couple of weeks back and it's the sliding bar report covers. I think I paid, well, I paid 50 cents for it. Um, actually, he may have just given me these because I don't think I saw them, but sliding bar report covers. And um, they've got these little plastic bars and these plastic sheets, and these make the best windows. And the reason I say that is, one, they're clear. Two, they're heavy duty, but they're not as regular acetate is kind of stiff. This isn't as stiff. It's firm, so it holds things in place, but it also has a little bit more give. It goes through the sewing machine beautifully, and you get a whole bunch. I mean, you know, that's two sides right there. And um, easy to cut, easy to use, and really, really like it. So that's what I've been using for my window pockets. I'm not sure if you can see this here, but um, there's, so this is a scrap frame with a border, and then I put some dried leaves that I collected last fall underneath so that I can see them. And again, there's no journaling space on this side, but there is on the other side, kind of made up for it. But just, you know, the little different scraps as a border. I just pieced them around after I'd I put the frame down. Somebody else said that they weren't able to glue the acetate, and I've had no problem gluing this. Um, I always sew anyway, so I don't put as much glue on as you could, but I had no problem gluing this. Uh, this is a belly band over a pocket, and I was going to tuck some stuff in here. And that's another question I had. I put it here somewhere to ask you guys. I'll think of it in a minute. Anyway, belly band with a pocket on the top with a little bit of a journaling tag, card, bookmark, what have you on there. And this made me smile. I like Brad's. And let's see, is that in frame? But I had one of these little arrows, and it's just kind of fun to play with. Jibaniri has a video where she shows how she makes these double envelopes. So basically you make an envelope, but you make two. And one is with tracing paper. And she sometimes leaves them loose and tucks little bits inside. And she sometimes um, sews them down so that you can trap pieces inside. But this is just a reminder to make some of those really fun, cool envelopes. It's just the same exact envelope cut twice and then layered over each other. And I sewed all the way around it because I liked the way it looked but you can put bits and pieces in between the two layers that would work well with vellum as well. So that's why that's in there as a reminder. Okay, I was gonna say this while I got here. Over here I put, oh, maybe I didn't. Oh, here it is, yay. All right, paper. My fabulous, wonderful viewers, paper. This is the Tim Holtz cardstock and it's really thick and I love it now that I know that you can ink it easily and sanding the edges. It's kind of got a smooth surface and it's craft on one side and whatever color on the other. Well, my, my friend Lisa gifted me with some much thinner, same idea. See, this is cardstock and it doesn't have that wiggle. But this is just more like recycled paper and it's green on one side and craft on the other and we can't find it and we both desperately need more. So if you have a source or know what this is called or where you can get it, that would be awesome. I would guess it's about a 60, 80 ish weight paper. It's not as thick as cardstock. And it's not like 110. Maybe 80 would be too high. Maybe it's a 60 ish, but it's definitely thicker than your standard 20 or 24 copy paper. So if you have a source, please, please, please share because we both love this. It sands beautifully and it makes great pockets. Plus, it goes really well with the Tim Holtz paper line. So there's that. Here is another of the stacked pockets, again, using book page and why I want a signature rack for my book page, just to, you know, lay them over so I can see at a glance what each one is. Uh, this is a long and lean pocket. Um, again, it's a stamp card, but it has a, a pad on the side so that you can put, you know, little bits to decorate in there. And here is a journaling card. I think this is just one of those Tim Holtz 
deals, or maybe it's a cut apart. And here is another journaling card, and this is just a tiny bit of lace and a tiny bit of paper folded over the edge just to make the journaling card a little tiny bit more interesting. And here's again another one of the button spots. Like I said, I've gotten addicted to making these with little itty bits of scrap lace. Uh, this was one of those time cards and I just cut it down and laid it to make kind of a, like a library pocket, a faux library pocket because it was too big for this book, but I really liked it. And then here is the pocket. Um, I just drew a blank on her name again, Attic Lane. And, um, she had a video a while ago and I made these and I just altered it a bit to suit my needs, but, and it's got a journaling spot inside. So it's a paper clip with a pocket on the side and then a journaling spot in it or a journaling card inside of it. Here is the, the one that Gail inspired where I just took a six by six sheet of paper, cut, uh, cut an inch off of it. So it was six by five, folded the corners in and then made a belly band with it. I wanted to include that because it's got two long journaling spots here, front and back. Now you could go all the way down too, because I didn't glue it down in there, but for the sake of symmetry, I wanted, um, we just finished up a unit on symmetry at school, so I was thinking symmetrical things. And then two tuck spots on the side with some simple journaling cards. And then the these are circle punches, circles that um, I punched with some of the leftover card stuff. So another crap, scrap idea. This is one of those um, Tim Holtz die cuts. And I just used, again, that window or that cover, sliding cover report paper over the top and a piece of tracing paper on the back it's just to make a kind of a fun journaling card and to show the die cut because die cuts are another thing. I didn't mention it as I was going through here, but die cuts are in there. Negative space and positive space of die cuts. And then again, just this really fun little itty bitty bead that I had found somewhere. And then this last one is again, it's another version of a stamp card. There's a way you can use stamp cards without using stamps or including stamps. And then another paper clip option of hanging it from the side. And more of those, some of my favorite quotes to make frames. And you don't have to put window film on there. It just makes it look more like a window. I could turn this into a paper clip if I wanted. I could put it as a decoration on top of like a flip card or a, a, one of the Laura Bame fold downs, um, fold down journaling spots or over the top on a flip up journaling spot. So just the way to use these frames, so many options and I kept them loose just to remind myself of the variety of different ways to do it. And... Charles Schultz, one of my favorite people, met him when I was younger, grew up in Sonoma County. In the Book of Life, the answers aren't in the back. And my classroom is always Snoopy themed, always will be. And my grandfather worked with JFK and I adored my grandfather. He had great respect for JFK. And this quote is one that I have written in my craft room too. We must find the time to stop and thank the people who make a difference in our lives. And I believe that with my whole heart because people need to know how important they are. All right, I was going to do uh, some other thank yous and shares and such at the end, but this video is already way longer than it needed to be. So I am going to stop here and I will do another video with the other bits that I was going to share. And then either Friday or Saturday, I will have a, um, a video showing how I made the cover. I've already got those pieces prepped and ready to go, how I make the cover and what I'm going to do differently. And I will go through and um, explain. I tried several different styles and and techniques as I was playing with this. Do I sew it on the front? Do I sew it on the back? Do How long do I make my accordion? How many pages? This completed project is six and a quarter by six and a quarter with a one and a half inch spine, though ours will be a two inch spine when I'm all said and done. And I am going to use fabric strips as the binding on the next book so that it's, I mean, this is for me is really pretty good, but it's still a bit of a gator mouth, which which I like but it'll be a little bit less and it's got 16 pages. So I used the 12 six by six squares and then I had six, uh, I'm sorry, four of the extra pages. I used braille, but you can use anything, cardstock or your collage pages or whatever you want. But that's, that's the format I am going to use. I am going to follow. Thank you for watching. Those of you who sent hap sent, have sent me happy mail, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate you. And I haven't opened it yet. Well, I've opened it, but I haven't gone through it yet. And so the next video will be um, a brief flip through of me getting to enjoy my happy meal. I haven't because I wanted to um, 
focus on getting this done and getting some other things done and getting the school year wrapped up. So if you've made it this far, thank you very much and happy creating.